to Bowling Green, Kentucky, our matchup on stadium. It is a good one. The North Texas Bean Green, four and four on the season in town to take on the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers who are five and three. Well, teams coming out, amped atmosphere. Let's take a look at the standings. This is a critical game for both programs. You see Western Kentucky and North Texas tied at three and one. The winner of this game will be in sole possession of second place. Hello to everyone, I'm Ari Wolf. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Well, for Western Kentucky, they're coming off a huge win against UAB. And a lot of people might have thought after last year, no more Bailey Zappi. What would happen to this program? Oh, they have found their man. Said is going to get deep into the numbers because their new starting quarterback is a stud, Austin Reed. Now for North Texas, they've got a 29-year-old starting quarterback in Austin Ani. He's a really good player, but for this team to be successful, they need to run the football. They had an eight-game conference winning streak heading into UT San Antonio last week. The Roadrunners get them in a great game that ended late in the fourth quarter. So for North Texas and for Western Kentucky, it is big time right now. they got to come up with a win. Let me bring in my friend and partner, the one and only Sid Bonner. And Sid, for North Texas is a team that when they got that losing streak last year, they decided to run the ball more. That's been their ticket to success. Do you expect them to go back to that this week? They must go back to that, Ari. This is a, a team that is dynamic when they're rushing the football, led by big center. Manasseh Mose, this guy gets it done. Here you see the numbers two weeks ago in a big win, 475 yards rushing in a win versus La Tech. And then a week ago, just 32 yards rushing. Cannot have that today. You've got to get the ball to your backs. You've got so many weapons. They got to get it done. Now for Western Kentucky, Austin Reed has been another revelation at quarterback. They found another Bailey Zappi, if that's even possible. This guy's got 27 total touchdowns. And last week in their win against UAB, they ran the ball effectively. But are you expecting him to sling it around today? I do. I expect him to make the mean green cover every inch of this field, 53 and a third. They're going to have to run sideline to sideline to cover receivers on quick screens. Those type of deals. Austin Reed is the big, strong kid with a powerful NFL-type arm. He's a great athlete, and he's a guy that runs this offense to perfection. Well, if you're a little amped up for the game, get frustrated. Take it out on the North Texas car. Look at the big fella just pounding that vehicle. The little guy wants a piece of it. We can't wait for the action. Opening kick when we come back on Stadium. All right, we're ready to kick this thing off, and here we go. Michael Matheson will bring it out. And a good return by Matheson gets it out to the 23-yard line. 23 yards on the return. And we get our first look at Austin Reed. And the route that got him here to Bowling Green. All right, had a brilliant high school career. Started his career at Southern Illinois. Ended up going to West Florida, wins the national title at Division II. And now here, for the Hilltoppers, averaging over 300 yards passing per game, and he's got 21 passing touchdowns. That's fifth best in all of FBS. So here we go. Our first play from scrimmage, first to 10. And they try to get it out into some space, and it's going to be incomplete. Trying to squeeze that in, the completion in there. Malachi Corley, who's really produced this season. He is a big-time weapon. The sophomore from Orange City, Florida. He's got 50 catches this year, including six receiving touchdowns. That's a great job by Deshaun Gaddy there to really stuff that play. You've got to have great blocks by your receivers outside. The toppers did not get it on that play. Davian Urban Poindexter is the running back. And Reed looking over to him. Gets it to the running back in the flat. And Urban Poindexter picks up a couple yards. How about your impact player, set? Well, you already got to look, try to get the ball to Malachi Corley. He is a devastatingly talented receiver. Six touchdowns on the season. And defensively, Mazin Richards coming off a big game. 11 tackles, a sack, and two and a half tackles for loss. This kid is on the way up. He's moving. He's a junior. Makes a ton of plays for the Mean Green. Keep your eye on the backfield. The freshman LT Sanders into the game. He had his breakout game last week. A career best 120 yards on the ground versus UAB. Third down. 36% conversion rate on third down this season. Read the big arm. Oh, that's almost picked off. And that was a dangerous decision there, throwing it out there. 
They dodged a bullet. That could have been a pick. Quinn Whitlock in coverage. Well, he was obviously fooled by the coverage. It wasn't anything there to go to. Two receivers, high low bracket outside. You've got to find something inside to throw to. Good start for the Mean Green. Rod Burns is back deep. Ellard, the kick. And he's going to let it go. And it'll be down at the 36 yard line. That's where North Texas will start out offensively. And we will get our first look at Austin Awney. What a road it's been for him. Second round draft pick back in 2012. Spent six seasons in the Yankees organization. Then was it with Arkansas for just a minute. And boy, he has played well for North Texas. Even though he's got eligibility left, he has said this will be his final season playing for Mean Green. He's going to try to take his game to the next level, play professional football next season. I tell you, he's really improved. He's done a lot of work to improve his skill set. He's become a much more accurate passer. It's one of the things I've noticed watching film on him. He makes the right throws. Throwing it down the field, and it's Burns with the catch. Acrobatic catch in Hilltopper territory at the 39. Early mistake by this defense. You get a wheel post combo and no one stays in the flat. You're in zone coverage, you're not in man. You have to have your eyes concentrated in the proper portion of the field. Io Adei is the running back. And he's got the football. And not a lot of room to work with. Gets it to the 35-yard line. And let's go over your impact players on this side of the ball. Yeah, for the mean green, I love Roger Burns. He's a speedster, six catches, 139 yards last week. He's a guy that can stretch the field and make a lot, a lot of plays. And then Khalif Halasi. This kid will probably be a Sunday player in the secondary. Bonnie, the throw into coverage. Bonnie is pass intended for number 16, Jair Shorter. Looking for Jair Shorter. He's had some struggles with some injuries over the... Yeah, during his career, years. he has. He, he's got a ton of talent. Oh, my goodness. Good size, can run. Austin Ani loses, loses the safety, does not find him. All right, we're going to check on the injured player. We are going to take a break, and we're coming right back here. Keep it right here on Stadium. Welcome back to the Hoach. We'll take a look at the last play here when Jair Shorter gets injured. Take a look at his left knee right there. Gets caught up right there underneath. A little bit of a hyperextension, but he got up and walked off on his own power, which was good to see. He's had Very some struggles news. with injuries, but he is super talent for the Mean Green. Third down here for North Texas on the season, converting at 37% on third down. Four receivers set. And Kaika Ragsdale is in the game at running back. Ani in the shotgun. Gives to Ragsdale. Ragsdale hard running as I believe he's very close. Let's see where they mark him. He had to get to the 29. He's going to be very short, but on this end of the field, you're going for this. Well, looks like they're trying to get up on the ball quickly. Yeah, you, the rule book, I mean, there's no rule book, but the book says <laughs> go for it. Right. The imaginary book, I would go for it on this end of the field. Of course, you got that big offensive line. Talked about Manasseh Mose. Guys played a ton of football. Get behind your big guy and, and get a half yard. Oh, they did? He's the man up there at the center. Just go right behind him. His 57th career start, a school record today. They gave him the first down. Oh, they gave him the first. Okay, first to 10. Point the is Ragsdale good. picks up maybe a half yard on the play. Well, I thought the initial spot wasn't a fair spot. They got it corrected and gave North Texas the first down. This is a team that when things are going well, they're balanced. They're going to be about 60-40 run to pass. Correct. Last week, it was the opposite. Now, give UTSA credit. They crowded the box with eight, nine guys. It forced them to become a passing team. And the thing is, everyone thinks it's, you, you know, you can't run against an eight-man box. You can. You just have to do it the right way. You've got to be able to use your quarterback at times to 
to help you in that running game against an eight-man front. But they've got to hit the pass shots that they take. Ani gets it out quickly. This is the burner. Kalon Horton, look at Horton. He'll take it for six. Touchdown, North Texas. Ooh, there's a flag on the other sideline. There's a flag all the way back at the 35-yard line. Kalon Horton, boy, this guy has been such a huge, pleasant surprise. He didn't get cleared till week two of the season. Well, you, he's a guy that immediately jumps out. When yep. you watch the tape, he is freak athlete, unbelievably quick. Personal foul, blocked below the waist by the defense number 12. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Touchdown is good. Called Khalif Halasi for a block below the waist. I, I... Ethan Mooney on for the extra point. Senior kicker from Fort Worth. He's been great for Mean Green throughout his career. Good snap, good hold. Kick is on the way. All right, it's time to vote for your fan of the game. Go to Twitter at Stadium to make your pick. Is it fan one? That's going to be hard to beat. Pretty darn cute. Fan two, again, very cute. Now, is this the mascot? That's what we're going with here? I like, look at the big red. All right, I mean, it's going to be hard. To, I mean, they're all winners. They are. Just, just, just go to Twitter at Stadium. We'll let you guys choose. We'll get back to it a little bit later. All right, what a start for North Texas. We'll need to kick it off. Matheson is deep, and there will not be a return. Was, I mean, it's nice to kick off from the 50. You look like you got a really strong leg. Well, I mean, <laughs> could you kick it through there for the I uh, know I could not. Yeah, so that, he's got a strong been, You know, he could yeah. show off a little bit. Just 10 yards. Well, that thing went up into the crowd on the grass. It's a great kick. All right, Western Kentucky's second offensive possession. They couldn't get much going on their first drive. Reed just one for three for two yards thus far. LT Sanders will start this series at running back. Yeah, get back to simplistic plays, being able to get the ball out early. Got a flag. Fourth year now, what a job he's done in conference play alone. 20 wins, just seven losses. He's a very impressive coach. He's lived football his whole life. He was telling us he started studying quarterback play at the age of five. He got a, got an early start. That's way ahead of me. Yeah, well, it's, it helps when your dad's a coach. It does. Your brother's a coach. Football's in the blood in the Helton family. First and 15. Keep it on the ground. LT Sanders, not much there, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Seth Luttrell, the head coach for North Texas. Seventh season leading the Mean Green, five of the last six seasons. He's led them to bowl games. In the yellow shirt, one of the great characters in all of college football, the defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett. 12 different schools, he's been a defensive coordinator at 10 different schools. Everything about him is just football, football, football. Fantastic yeah. to talk to. What a great guy. Phenomenal. Reed, they set up the screen to Sanders. Sanders gets close to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up third down. Gain of five on the play. Last time Western Kentucky got into third down, they weren't able to convert. I'm sure they would like to give their defense a little bit of rest here. Beautiful conditions, temperatures in the low 70s. Just an ideal fall afternoon here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Third down. Reed with it. He'll sling it out, and that is caught. 
Jalen Hall makes the catch. They're, they're giving him the first down. It's a good spot. This, this is a long throw, and I mean, this, this ought to tell you how strong this arm is. Graduate transfer from Western Michigan, Jalen Hall with the catch. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers, LT Sanders. And he picks up a couple yards on first down. We'll take that anytime you can get him off balance and, and get three and a half on first down. Keep going fast. They want to get this momentum picked up. Get some rhythm. Not allow. Reed, nice pocket. And he delivers on time. But Daywood Davis cannot make the catch. Davis, the Oregon transfer. They just love this guy. Rich Tejada in coverage for Mean Green. And Davis is down. Yeah, he's got to got to make this catch. This is a good, well thrown ball, and you're going to have contested catches when you're getting some two man coverage. Right there, you're going to land awkwardly on that left knee. Right there, and he comes down. He's a little off balance. That's a, that's a tough one. Real tough. Hate to see that. Well, the medical staff will continue to evaluate him. And that would certainly be a real adjustment that Coach Helton would have to make. They've got some depth at receiver, but they lean heavily on Daywood Davis, who is described by his former coach, Mario Cristobal, as the most unselfish guy he's ever coached. We're coming right back. It's homecoming. Festive weekend, great atmosphere. Little tailgate outside and the party coming inside. Houchin Smith Stadium. Good look at the stadium. Hilltoppers won the national title 2002. 20 year anniversary of that team, celebrating it this year. Jack Harbaugh, the head coach, when they won the national championship. Harbaugh has a big stamp on the program here. Jim was helping out his dad that season in 2002. Harbaugh's know a little bit about football. What do you think, Sid? Ooh, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Austin Reed, all day, will throw, and that's almost caught. That's going to be tough. Made it tough on the receiver, Dalvin Smith. Listen, just a little off here and there, right? You come off a real tough game last week where it turns into a defensive battle. And you're just not sharp early in this game. And that's one thing you got to do against a team that has the ability to run the ball and really take the air out of the football. If they start getting on a roll, you've got to be sharp early, not allow them to get going. Tom Ellard on to punt. Roderick Burns waits at his own 20. And they're going to let this one bounce. It takes a hilltopper roll, and it'll get close to the 15-yard line. Gets all the way there. Join us next Saturday for another great matchup in Conference USA as Frank Harris and the UTSA Roadrunners take on UAB at Protective Stadium in Birmingham, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, only on Stadium. Welcome to the game, and that is a big-time matchup. I, I tell you what, the top top four teams to me in this league are, are all legit. legit. And well, Western Kentucky... North Texas still have some big games. The North Texas at UAB game is going to be a huge game coming up. Really big game. You saw that one there. There's a lot of good, good Conference USA action. Oscar Attaway, the tailback on this series for North Texas. Ani rolls out. Oh, that's nice. Makes the completion. Damon Ward with the catch. The sophomore from Beaumont, Texas. His 13th catch of the season. Really good. 12 yards on the play. Sorry, set. Oh, you're good. Way to get, way to get the big guy in, involved in the game. Ani with the great throw. He's already got a touchdown pass on a screen, but just being efficient with the play calling, gets the ball out of his hand quick. Nice little curl route. Attaway, the ball carrier, and Attaway drags two guys with him as he picks up 14 yards on the play. Jaquez Evans with the tackle. Evans had a huge game last week. For the Hilltoppers, that was a solid run. That's what the that's what Mean Green wants to do, right? Said they just want to pound the football, set up that really play really action. Doing a nice job, Jet Duncan. These guys getting after, doing a really good job up front. Hat on a hat. Ani downfield, and it is caught. Damon Ward, he'll take it for six. Touchdown, Mean Green. 
Okay, Talik Allen takes a poor angle on this. And when he threw it, I thought Austin Ani had just made a colossal mistake. You just got your running game going. Talik Allen takes a bad angle. And he gets away throwing that ball into cover two. It just had more pace, more air than Allen thought he had. Mooney for the extra point. And the kick is up, and it is good. You get your rushing attack going right here. Pull the left guard around. He does a nice job kicking out Attaway with a big gain. And then the next throw, you know you have cover two. There's a, sa oh, there's a safety on this side of the hash. You know you got to squeeze this ball in there. Austin Ani does just that. Throws it. Poor angle by Talik Allen. And Ward does the rest. Hey, Sid, how about these numbers? You, you played quarterback pretty well. Ani so far is four for five, 122 yards and two touchdowns. That's probably going to be an early leader for player of the week. I think so. Well, now Western Kentucky, you know, they're very comfortable throwing the football, but this is going to change the play calling, right? You're down two touchdowns early. Do you stick with your game plan, or do you feel like you got to you got to get points quickly. No, I think their game plan has the ability to get points quickly. It's not out of the realm of what they want to do. Take a look at this route. Does a nice job getting outside and stacking. You see the corner knew he had help. That's why his eyes went back to the backfield once the receiver got by him. But again, poor, poor angle back there by Talik Allen. Retro freshman, you've got to cover that angle high. That's an interception. We're to learn something about West Kentucky. I mean, this is instant adversity. You're coming off your signature win against UAB. All of a sudden, you're down two touchdowns at home. How will they react? Urban Poindexter has it. And Larry Nixon, the third, makes the tackle. They got two really good linebackers at that spot, Larry Nixon and Kevin Wood, who's back playing healthy, and they're thrilled to have him back. So they've got some depth now at linebacker. They, they do, and they're getting better. And I'll tell you what Coach Ben talked about is them just finishing, right? They're yep. getting better. They're all understanding. They're growing up. They're learning. Uh, and, man, he was so ex had youthful exuberance talking about these kids. Like, he loves, loves yep. it. There's a lot to like about this team. Both these programs headed in the right direction. Oh, they fake it, and they go to Urban Poindexter. No place to go. That's a fantastic play. Tom Treeb. Treeb does a nice job of staying home in his lane. They, they run a throwback screen. You fake a screen one way and come back to the back. Well, he's dealt with some injuries. Got hurt against UNLV, but he's a freak athlete. They love this guy. He was an outside linebacker at Northern Illinois. Well, you'd stay home. You know, that play goes wide left. You know you're not going to run it down from that side of the field. Stay in your gap. Have rush lane integrity and make a big play like you just did. TFL. No blitz. Three-man rush. Read the throw, and that is caught more than enough for a first down. Good read that time. Michael Matheson makes the catch. Deshaun Gaddy with the tackle. Did you see the pressure the Mean Green's trying to play with? Ridge to hot of Deshaun Gaddy. They're trying to play up close and personal with these receivers for Western Kentucky. Urban Poindexter, good carry. Picks up close to seven yards on first down. And this Western Kentucky offense got a little rhythm going now. They, they do, and, and you expect to see Malachi Corley get in the mix here any second. Reed, time, rolls to his right. Sets up, he's going to throw deep down the field, and that is caught. Jalen Hall. Fantastic play by Austin Reed. This is unbelievable. He gets flushed out of the pocket, keeps his eyes up, and your receiver does a great job. He is far left side. Watch receiver Jalen Hall comes all the way across the field, and he lays it on his eyes. That's a beautiful throw by Austin Reed. Using his athleticism, getting out of the pocket. It's right, so now in the red zone. 
They've been good in the red zone. Scoring 86% of the time, 68% of the time getting touchdowns. First and goal. Play action read with time to the end zone. That's caught. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. Joshua Simon, the tight end, gets the score. I don't know how this play is still success successful in America because every team in America has this. It's power action to the same side. You run the flood, you run a flat route, then you run a corner route behind it. And every week somebody gets sucked up on the running game and your tight end gets behind him. It's one of the best plays in all of football. Imitation, we'll the most out. sincere form of flattery, 100%. my friend. You it watch it all over, around the country. And, and for decades, yeah. Ari. Braden Narvison on for the extra point attempt. His kick is up. And it is good. Well, they step up on that drive. Six plays at 75 yards. All right, let's give you a recap in case you're just joining us on Stadium. You've tuned into a good one. Three touchdowns already. So the main green in town taking on the Hilltoppers. And here it's Horton on the screen, and you love how this one was blocked. It was blocked exceptional, and then you get it into your athlete's hands, let him go. And Ani throws a nice ball over the top. Beautiful throw and catch, and a nice play fake here. Tight end does a nice job of slow going to the corner. Joshua Simon with the dime from Austin Reed. Great to see Simon out there playing well. Had to deal with a serious injury week one last year. Missed the entire season. Uh, he could be a difference maker for this team. They like him. He's got some Kyle Pitts to him. The big athletic guy can get down the field. He's on the Mackey watch list and also a candidate for the comeback player of the year. You know, it just gives you, provides you that extra guy that, that could get you a mismatch, right? You get a, you get a linebacker, inside linebacker, trying to cover him trying to cover him out in space. That is 100% in this match. Horton waits for a chance. Remember, this guy can fly from his own goal line. He's already got a kick return for a touchdown this season. Horton trying to get to the outside. And nice job there by Western Kentucky to stay in their lane. All right, different styles, similar results said. You know, at the end result, very similar, but they do it different ways. Yeah, through the air and through the ground, right? 317 passing, that's what gets them over the hump for West Kentucky and on the ground, 222 yards on the ground. I think the big shocker is that Austin Ani has, has been able to do it. He's, he's thrown over 2,000 yards coming into this game and 20 touchdowns, uh, was leading the conference in touchdown passes during conference play, so he's, Definitely stepped his game up, and I think that's what provided them the boost to kind of get over the top. Him really upping his game. All right, see if Ani can keep it going. Two drives, two touchdowns. They keep it on the ground. A day, maybe a yard and a half on first down. Well, the balance for North Texas statistically, it seems like they're just passing the football, but it seems they've been running enough to set up the pass. They, they have. And, uh, when you, when you could have a four-yard run, a six-yard run, and then a last drive, a 14-yard run, it sets up play action really well for you. A day. And it's going to bring up third, and, we'll call it third and six. That's a good response by the right side of that defensive line. Big Darius Ship in there. Those guys getting after it on the right side over there, making it tough. All right, third down. North Texas one for one on third down. A day remains in the game on third down. Looks like the blitz is coming, and it is. Ani gets rid of it, and that is caught, and that is the tight end, Varkey's Gums. And this guy is quickly becoming a star. And we talked about mismatches, right? So now you get your middle linebacker trying to cover that guy in space. He is too dynamic. Ani is going to tuck it, and he's going to pick up some pick up some yards. Well, the tight end position has really become a huge asset for this offense. When you combine Jake Roberts and Varkey's Gums numbers, 32 catches, little under 600 yards, and six TDs coming into this game. Well, you got you got Roger Burns, you got.
these guys outside with speed, right? So the middle of the field's open. If you got a guy that can work the middle of the field, you're going up against safeties, linebackers. You're not going up against cover corners. Add away the ball carrier, and he is stopped at the 45-yard line. And again, third and intermediate, right? Short. Third and, to me, he's third and short. Third and four yards. So many things available to you as a play caller. They go fast. Ani the throw, and that is caught. Boy, they went fast there. Terrific catch there. Jordan Smart. Yeah, J Jordan Smart, the sophomore. Did a great job of holding on to that thing. And Austin Ani, you want to talk about baseball terminology, he flipped the double play right there, got the ball out of his hand so quick. Ani moving to his right. Now he'll stop, and he'll flick it over to Jake Roberts, and Roberts, and he has enough for a first down. That's a little Brett Favre-like right there. Well, that's a fantastic play right here. He's already used his legs on this drive to keep it moving, but he gets outside, wants to throw back, nothing there, good duck, and then flips it. Well played by Austin Ani, showing some poise. Ani looking, again, similar play. Less yardage, and Roberts kind of got jacked right near the sideline. But I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why he didn't throw the curl route. He still had, that's the same route they ran a little bit earlier. And the curl route was sitting right in the window, available for him. I think he wanted to go deep on that one, take a shot. But again, non-negative play. You don't take a sack, you don't throw it to the other team. You get something out of it, which has been the difference with him. He's been able to take care of the football. Davion Bishop in now at running back. Oh, check that, it's a day E in there. It was a day the ball carrier picks up a few yards. So you look at their, their running back list, you look all the way down the list. There's not one of these dudes underneath 190, 190 They're all pounds. big. They're all big, strong, and, quick. And one of the best ones, Isaiah Johnson, isn't here. He got hurt on that touchdown in the fourth quarter, not on the play, but on the celebration. It's a disappointing for Isaiah, but he's a terrific player. I really Absolutely. like watching him. So hopefully 23 will be back soon. Third down. Ani feeling the pressure, and he'll get rid of it. Good blitz that time. Aaron Key was blitzing the redshirt freshman from Decatur, Georgia. And they said, you know, he's going to get like 15 plays a game. Get in there on third down. And he made his presence felt immediately. Well, using his quickness, right? 6'1", 230 pounds. Can move, is fluid. You see there, Asanani didn't have time to really react to what was happening. 49 yard, no, check that 39 yard attempt for Mooney. He's 12 of 13 on the season. Kick is on the way and it is good. So Ethan Money delivers. All right, most spirited fan base. You gotta get that, you gotta get your, get off your phone. You gotta get that QR code. Get the QR code, make your pick. It's time to vote who's got the better fan base, North Texas or Western Kentucky. You the fan get to decide, let us know, and we'll let you know later in the game. Well, we've seen a lot of offense here, Sid. Both teams moving the ball down the field what? without a lot of resistance so far. Why are you saying that like you're disgusted with it? Oh, I like it. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm an offensive guy, dude. I, <laughs> I love what I'm seeing right now. Great response from Western Kentucky. UNT coming out with a great plan, really jumping on board, getting points on all three drives. They're, they're doing an exceptional job right now. 295 yards of total offense. We've still got 90 seconds to go in the opening quarter. You ready for a thousand yards of total offense today? I, I would love to see it. Kickoff's a good one. No chance at a return. So we'll see what Austin Reed and the Hilltoppers, they keep, keep the momentum from their last drive. They had a beautiful drive that ended in Joshua Simon with the touchdown catch. And, and make no mistake, that defense did a nice job as you get a look at the Hilltoppers' first two drives, nine plays, 15 yards, two punts on the first two, man. That's in the last drive, look, 
more like them. You talked about them getting in a rhythm, Art. Yeah. Uh, and they did just that. Defense holding Mean Green to three. That's a win. Because they've been giving up tubs today. That's a win. Reed's going deep down the field. Seaver was open and is caught catch. with pass interference. It's Daywood Davis. So they hit him on the bomb. 47 yards on the play. We're going to get the young man, Ridge Tejada. And this is tough to defend. The guy's running a go route or post route across your face. Pass interference. Defense number 26. The penalty has been declined. Result of the play is a first down. Well, they love Daywood Davis. That's going to be a tough matchup for Tejada. It is, but he has gotten better. The thing is here, you, he can't really do anything. The receiver has to slow down to get the ball. You obviously are running as hard as you can. You really can't do much about it. You might as well make sure he doesn't catch it. And, you know, don't make it a 35, 40-yard play. Give him a 15-yard play. First and 10 at the 32. Reed, play action, blitz is coming, gets rid of it. And had to throw it a little bit high because the pressure was coming, looking for Corley. Now that was a, a well-designed blitz. Larry Nixon came around, it wasn't picked up. Austin Reed had to chuck and duck so it may be. He wasn't able to step in and finish that throw. Tom Treve and Enoch Jackson come into the game. They're expecting a pass play here on second and 10. So it's Irvin Poindexter gets into some space. They fooled him. Going to the ground game, they pick up nine and set up third and short. What a nice job of turning the corner, getting north-south immediately. Did not waste time trying to make moves on people. Really nice game. Irvin Poindexter. Boy, there's like five or six guys there to me, and he did well. He got very close to the first down when it looked like he had no chance. I'd like to see him, and I'm sure coaches would like to see him get straight up. One cut and straight up field. You can't bounce on third and short. Uh, Every play's not going to be a home run. He made the first down with a great second after, after initial contact. 100%. I'll give you that, Ari Wolf. You saw that one more. And we've got a flag before the play. Too many men. I think they're going to pick it up. They were there is no there. foul for illegal substitution. We were in the substitution process. Good to see these guys communicate, get the right call, so no flag on the play. Reed with time to the end zone. Corley can't get there. Needed just a little more air onto that football. What a great design. They put him in trail technique on the tight end. And they end up getting the linebacker, KD, on him one-on-one. -on -one. If he just drops it in that bucket a little bit sooner, just out of the outstretch arms of Malachi Corley. Great design. Good read. Just need a little more touch on that ball. What a call right there. I can see why Austin Reed's on the Maxwell, the O'Brien, and now just announced this week on the Manning watch list. I mean, he, he's got all the tools at quarterback. Well, he's a big, strong kid as well. When you look at him, he's got. Well, they tried to set up the wide receiver screen and nothing to do there. We are back. We are back. Great first quarter, 17-7. North Texas in front. But Western Kentucky is on the move. QB play is ramped up a notch. These guys are getting after 349 total yards. 
UNT averaging 10.7 yards per play. Western Kentucky over seven yards a play. I mean, come on. If you don't like offense, go watch some rugby or something because this is not your place. Austin Reed slings it downfield, and that's almost picked off. It's a great job in coverage. Deshaun Gaddy, who is their top corner. They love me. Big personality, big talker. Played great in their week zero win down at the Sun Bowl against UTEP. He's just got some physicality about him, right? And athleticism with his length, 6'1", 190 pounds. 43-yard attempt for Braden Narvison. Narvison on the season has got a long of 47. Kick is on the way, has the distance. And it is good. Well, that's a beautiful kick from Narvison. He's now got 46 career field goals. He's got to have he stays healthy. So Richard Jr. could become the uh, all-time leader in field goals made by the time he's done here in Bowling Green. I say we got a one-score game, 17-10. Just the way we like it. All right, close game. Teams fight. I mean, this huge in game, huge game for this conference. Uh, you you get sole possession of second place, control your own destiny. Top two teams are going to play for the title. Uh, you you get two games behind. It's going to be tough to catch back up in this conference. Oh, coming into the season, people thought it'd be UTSA or UAB at the top. So these two teams, a lot of people had them, you know, towards the top, and nobody really, I think, believed that one of these two teams would end up being the second place team. But that was going into the year. Now the winner of this game's gonna control their own destiny to play in the conference championship game in early December. I think, especially when you think about UNT, you know, I mean, they, they did win eight straight conference game, but last year at one point, they were playing so awful. Before they went on a run to finish the season out, uh, but they've their identity has changed their toughness has changed here comes Horton keep your eye on him Why wow, he got hit and started running the other way. I wonder if he Seriously, right it looked like for a second. He wasn't sure which way to go That spun around it was he moved so fast Couldn't figure out that direction if he just kept going the other direction that would have been a highlight that all of America would have been watching later today <laughs> And one he would not have wanted to be associated with. Well, you know, much like hey, we still Alan talking Hill. about Jim Marshall. All oh, you Vikings fans out there don't like to hear that story. All right, here we go. First and 10 for Mean Green from their own 15-yard line. Ragsdale will start this series as the running back. Ani's been terrific so far. Burns in motion. They keep it on the ground. Ragsdale picks up, yep, four yards on the carry. Ani so far, seven for nine, 149 yards and two touchdowns. Attaway leading them on the ground with two carries for 20 yards. Second six. Roberts in motion. Ani gonna check it down. Ragsdale picks up the first down and more. Jaden Hunter, the linebacker, the redshirt senior from Atlanta, makes the tackle. I think that's what Ikaika brings to them is a little better hands out of the backfield, being able to run routes. He's good in protection. Ikaika Ragsdale, he can do a lot of nice things. They have such great depth at running back. Again, it's Roberts in motion, first and ten. It's Ragsdale. And well, second effort gets him up to the 31 yard line. Playing with good pace right now. The Mean Green are doing a nice job of controlling tempo. Seen some great decisions by Austin Ani. He's just run, run his offense, taking shots when he's had them available. Ani throws downfield, and that is caught. Damon Ward with it gets into Hilltopper territory. This is a nice route here. He runs a little curl. They're rolling this way. As soon as a flat defender gets out of the way, 
You see the nice curl route by Damon World Ward, excuse me, under over the top of him. Great job, great design. They've run that play about two or three times. Had success on it every single one. Ani looks over to the sideline. And they're going to keep it on the ground with Attaway. And Attaway, that's a terrific run. Picks up 11 yards, another first down. That's a product of get, getting early, having early down success in the run game. You get the throw on first down. You, you really get a defense on its heels when you control tempo. Burns in motion, makes the catch. Roderick Burns, and he's out of bounds at the 35. A late flag comes in from the back judge. Halasi forced him out of bounds. Yeah, call holding. Possibly on Jake Roberts. Holding. Offense number 87. 10 yard penalty and remains first down. Echoes on the big sophomore tight end, Jake Roberts. And actually gave him a lot of compliments on how much he's worked on his blocking, but that time gets flagged for holding. Well, it's tough when you're out there. Those those DBs are skilled little guys, right? So he's got to move his feet, keep his hands inside. But I like the fact, the fact that they're being aggressive. And he's doing a nice job of... of... Now we've got movement. Oh, this is a tough one because the nose guard came in. He has the ability to get back, but the center touched his helmet. Offside. Defense number 99 with contact. Five-yard penalty remains first down. I mean, he might have been in the neutral zone, but it looked to me like Manasseh Mose touched his helmet to draw that penalty. Mose is the leader of this offense. They lean on him. One of the captains. Attaway on the ground. That's a nice job of Halasi, number 12, coming up from that corner position. He's not scared to come in there and make a tackle, coming in with 48 tackles on the season. Yeah, he teams up with Jaquez Evans, but you know, if you want to play next level, you got to be able to yep. tackle. And that was one of the things that he told Coach he wanted to do. He wants to play at the next level, and you've got to be able to tackle in space, and you got to be able to tackle aggressively. Ani a little bit high on the throw, looking for Damon Ward. Well, keep it on Halasi for a moment. He's the current Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week. Five tackles, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and an interception last week. Uh, a fourth quarter interception. Yeah. I mean, 6'1", 200 pounds, and you can cover. I mean, that's phenomenal size with the ability, with your strength, to be physical. All right, third down. And the Hilltoppers get a stop. You take your pick on either slot. Looks like pressure's coming, Sid. Ani delivers, and the throw is high. Looking for Jamori Macklin. Talik Allen in coverage. Well, this is a high throw. Talik Allen falls down. He's having a hard time with his angles coming out of his breaks. Well, what do you do here, Sid? You're at the 39-yard line. Do you go ahead and punt it? I'll, I'll punt it, try to change field position right here. Well, they're going to try to punt it. Fernando Rodriguez into punt, and he just wants a, you know, a, a little, like a, a Sid Bonner sandwich, a little spin on it inside the five. Mine's spin the wrong way, so this would kick right in the end zone. You don't want that. You want, you want it to stop. Well, this one looks pretty good. And a fair catch at the 10-yard line. So Rodriguez does his part. Hilltoppers with the football when we come back. Welcome back. Glad you're with us on College Football Saturday. We are in Bowling Green, Kentucky. A good one so far. North Texas in Western Kentucky. Currently tied for second place in Conference USA. The winner will be in sole possession and hoping to play in the Conference Championship game. 
Both teams, including today, with four games left in their seasons. Everything still in front of them said this is a huge game. All right, Wolf, well, Seth Bonner with you. Glad you're with us on Stadium. Reed gets it to Davis. And Davis, good game, picks up eight yards on first down. This is a good read in the RPO game. He sticks it in the running back's belly. Conflict defender to that side comes on a blitz and he throws it out for a nice game. It's Davis again and he'll get the first down. A group of guys tackle him after a gain of four yards. Deshaun Gaddy amongst the mean green there to make the stop. Yeah, they've, they've run a number of these. You're going to look for them to at some point try to hit him over the top with a with a a fake screen and go. Sean Getty has been extremely aggressive down here. He's the corner to the near side. Hey, and Reed's really turned oh, around. Here. Started two of six, eight of his last 11. Reed the throw. And that's Corley making the catch, and he does not go down easy. Malachi Corley. He, he takes a shot right here. And bounces up. He is strong. He listed at 5'10 or 5'11, 210 pounds. Runs like a tailback when he gets the ball in his hands. Good read on the underneath, little inside looky route. Cortland Rossaw who they really like. He's a big athletic kid. He stepped up big time. All right, we're going to take a break. Hopefully, Rossaw will be okay when we come back. It's homecoming. You need a parade. You got to stand up and cheer. I mean, what's more fun than Halloween weekend and it's homecoming? You get it all. Everything. Right place to be at the right time. Bowling Green, Kentucky. I mean, they really put some effort into these things. I'm Those impressed. Nice Very nice play. Top notch. All right, back to football. Seven point game, 10 17 to go, first half. It was all North Texas out of the gate, but Western Kentucky's climbed back into the game. They've got first and 10 at their own 36. And they get it to Davis, where they really like this screen. To Davis, it's it's really a lot like a running play. It is 100% an extension of the running game. You're just looking at numbers. That's all you're looking at. If you've got numbers and defense doesn't react accordingly, you're going to get it over there and get as many as you can. You take a five-yard gain on first down every time. Said so this is eight straight pass plays for the Hilltoppers, and they complete this one. Jalen Hall making the catch. They're doing a nice job of, of leveraging, running, using curl flat combos. You see there, there goes the pump. And uh oh, yeah. down goes Austin Reed. Kadrin Johnson. West Dory gets around West Dorsey for the sack, but kept talking about them running a pump and go on that screen and they try it there. The mean green stay home, stay disciplined in their coverage, do a nice job and the sack by Cajun Johnson. Sacks have been hard to come by for this team coming in with just eight sacks on the season. Eight takeaways, they need more of both. Blitz is coming, balls out. Ball's out, recovered by Austin Reed. Boy, it was down on the turf for a good second and a half before Reed found the football. Again, you need to find some help for Cajun Johnson because he is coming off the left edge right there. Look at the rip through. And what and a again, job to get the ball out. Right, and again, beats Wes Dorsey. So you got to have some help. Either slide protect, but you got to give him some help because right now, Cajun Johnson feels like he is the best dude on the field. In the last two plays, he has been. Third and 27. Just a three-man rush coming. Oh, they're going to go real conservative, give it to Irvin Poindexter. What do you think of that decision? I, I'm, I'm fine with it. Right? You had two massive negative plays. Uh, no reason to throw it up. Try to throw some up. Third and 27 and try to get a first down. It's 
punt it. Play for field position. But Ellard on to punt. It's a good decision. And a good response by the defense. Yeah, it looked like Western Kentucky had a real good drive going. Demean Green come up with a couple of big plays defensively to force the punt. It's a good looking punt. And Burns gonna let it go. It's the right decision. It goes into the end zone. Want to remind all of you watching what's at stake in this game. They're both in second place, tied at three and one. The winner takes sole possession. Remember, the top two teams will go to the Conference USA Championship game. And right now, there's still football to be played, but it looks like UTSA is going to be in that championship game. But there's still a lot of football to be played, and these two teams have got to like where they're positioned in conference play. Yeah, and you don't want to fall uh, two games back, right? In this race, uh, UTSA is going to play UAB next week, so that's going to be a, a big, big-time matchup. And someone's going to lose. Someone's going to lose. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but U UTSA holds a tiebreak over both these teams, so they'd have to lose twice. A day in, and he picks up three yards on the play. You know, it's, a, it's kind of your know, conference scheduling is unique. There used to be divisions. Now everyone's just in one big division. So these two programs haven't played each other since 2016. So there's not film from last year or the year before to work off of as these two programs getting reacquainted for the first time in six seasons. There's always tape you can find. Right? Oh, yes. Just not against each other. Good well, Ani Blatt's well done. Gets it out to the tight end. Jake Roberts. Again, extension of the RPO here. And you get the conflict defender that's lined up over Jake Roberts. Decides to go run in and get a sack. Ani with a quick throw. Puts it right on his hands. That's a beautiful read by Austin Ani. Ani's having a terrific first half. Just three incompletions. The give to Adei and Adei. Just a couple of yards on first down. Darius Ship 97 in on the play. Ship preseason second team all conference USA. Ship spends a ton of time in the weight room. He got to get strong playing in that interior part of the defensive line. I mean, you're, you're getting blocked most of the time by two guys, right? You got to be able to take on two blockers. Keep them off your linebackers. And no place to go. Well defended. Jaquez Evans. And they love him. His nickname is Donut. Everybody calls him Donut. And I was like, everybody likes Donuts, right? Who doesn't want that nickname? Puts a smile on your face every time. It does. It does. It's a great read by him. Quez, nice through, makes a tackle for loss. Coming into this game with 62 tackles. And they consider him a jack of all trades. Got to do a lot of different things in his position in this defense. Third down. On, oh. he's in trouble, and he'll go down. The man on the spot again. Jaquez Evans gets the sack. What a series for Evans. And, and how about you calling it, Ari? He's got to do a lot of things in this offense. Here you're going to see him up on top. He's going to be right up here on top, coming off the edge. And look out below, because this is a beautiful move. Again, great usage of the hands. And then a couple of little dance moves. Oh, play a little piano. Do a little something. Rodriguez to punt. Gonna let it bounce and then play it. Jalen Hall secures the football. We have a flag down at the 42 yard line of North Texas. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 23. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. All right, we're gonna step away. 
single touchdown game. It's a good one so far. If you're just tuning in, let's get you caught up. We've had three touchdowns in a game. Let's take a look at all of them. Ani gets it to the speedster. Kalon Horton for the score. Then going down the field, and what a throw. Damon Ward gets the touchdown. And here, Joshua Simon, the tight end. Hilltoppers touchdown. As you can see, a little bit of a slow start. A couple good drives. So following the penalty, they'll start out first to 10 from their own 15-yard line. As good as this offense has been, Ari, the, the win last week, the way it was done, that, that lets them know they can win those type of games. They'd like it to look a lot prettier, though. Well, I felt like Tyson Held almost felt like he was apologizing for the offense because he, you know, expects his guys to do their thing. Irvin Poindexter, plenty of space. And he picks up 13 yards. They were effective running the football last week. Let's see if we see more of the ground game. Personal foul, face mask, defense number three. 15 yard penalty for Denver one, automatic first down. As Larry Nixon, the third, he's gonna come out of the game. Now this, this is an explosive finish right there. You see him pulling on it. This is a physical game. There's guys living off the field every other play. This is a very physical contest, which tells you there's something on the line, which we've already talked about that. Second place and a leg up in the, in the race to be in the, the championship game of Conference USA. A little miscommunication there. Reed's going to throw it up. Sutton didn't look right for the play action. I felt like he turned, expected the running back to be there. And there was a little, little miscommunication there that threw off the play. They got the freshman in at running back, LT Sanders. He just got coached up by his quarterback, Austin Reed. He, he did with yes. some emphatic arm <laughs> movements. You're supposed to be here, not here. It happens sometimes, but listen. They didn't throw it away, they didn't lose the ball. Yep. Live to play another down. All right, their last three times they've gone back to pass. Sack, sack, and incomplete. And Reed completes this one. It's Corley in space. Corley the spin move. Stays on his feet and down at the 35-yard line. He is so dynamic. And this is a great job using the play action. It's just a key screen to Corley on the left side. Good job blocking out in front by Jalen Hall. That's the first thing you have to have. And then you got to have a guy running with the ball with some desire. And Malachi Corley does that every time he touches it. On the ground. You tell T. Sanders making people miss. And he's going to get, we call it nine and a half yards on the play. Shot down, shot down. Second and about six inches. What do you think here? Take a I'm shot. Taking a shot here. Yeah. Trying to find my best matchup. Well, they're thinking first down, and it's Sanders. Brought down at the 19-yard line. The reason he, he keeps giving it, they've got the, the outside backers walked out, so it's five on five inside. Look at LT Sanders, but a late flag comes in. Holding. Offense number 78, 10 yard penalty, remains first down. Good Contavious Leslie. And they love him. So physical, big guy, 6'3, 310 pounds from Rome, Georgia. But you know, you get the rhythm going, everything's going your way. One penalty changes everything. Now you or, get behind or, or the, the last sticks. Drive, one sack. One right? sack, right? Yeah, it, it just happens like that. But again, you get inside, you get five on five in the box, and you're going to run it every time. And so they're taking advantage of the outside backers going out and lining up over their slot receivers. Reed quickly to Corley. Corley in space. Corley makes a move, and it's going to set them up inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. 
Deshaun Gaddy with the tackle. Uh, just every time he touches the ball, you feel like he's going to score. I feel like he's in a video uh, game uh, when he touches literally, it. Literally, like it, it's on a different speed level. Very fun to watch this young man play. He was one of Sid's impact players, and he's delivered in the first half. Less than two and a half minutes to go till halftime. Read the throw. So Mason nice. Richards made the tackle. Yeah, that's a nice reaction on a wide leak, and I, I don't think there was enough fake. It have to fake that a little bit, and they run the tight end right out. They leak him out like he's going to block, and he slips by a defender. Great response by Mason Richards. Uh, Joey Belgen made the catch. Uh, he's best friends with Austin Reed, which I think usually probably helps you get a few looks. Few, at least a couple. Right? Right. Even, even when you're covered right there, he throws a great ball to him. Friendship has its perks. All right, third down, huge play here for the Hilltoppers. Look at Malachi Corley here in the slot. Austin Reed, great pocket. Throws, and that is almost picked off. Deshaun Gaddy, great job in coverage, almost had the turnover. And Austin really gets greedy here, tries to use his arm, never sees his receiver come out of the break. Waits too long. There's a little contact there, but they're always going to let that go, right? There's, he's entitled to his own space as well. This ball is thrown late. And Deshaun Gaddy, we talked about him earlier, being aggressive. He's doing just that. Nearly shuts down the drive. 32-yard attempt for Braden at Narvison. Kick is on the way, has the distance. And it is good. Now 17-13. High school basketball on stadium starts next Thursday with the grind session. Check out some of the top prospects and prep schools in the country. It all starts Thursday, November 3rd at 6 Eastern on stadium. Welcome to the game. So we have that to look forward to. Basketball season's almost upon us. Great time of year with college football, college basketball. Overlap for a little while. A lot of great action. Love it. Love it. More Love sports it. the better. That's that's when I truly watch, especially on the weekends, sports. Like you know, I can get in there, watch it. Can see you gotta get caught happens. up. You can't watch everything, especially we work on Saturday, right. so you miss a lot. Corey Munson to kick it off. And they will not bring it out. A quick start for the Mean Green. They got out in a hurry. A couple early touchdowns for Austin Oni, but punts on the last couple of series. Well, I think defensive adjustments and, and playmakers making plays on the defensive side for the Hilltoppers. And, Production has slowed, but you still love the way Austin Ani is playing right now, the way he's doing everything. He's given his team a chance to compete on every down. Ani, 10 of 13, 185 yards, two touchdowns. Attaway's the running back. Ani, play action. Got an open receiver. He's got enough for a first down. They cannot, they have not adjusted to this route. This is the exact same route, a little short. Damon Z Ward, curl. another catch. Z curl over the middle. And they haven't covered it one time. Attaway in motion. Ani is going to step up and take off. Flags are down. Ani wants to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Can't do it. But the clock will stop because of the penalty. That's a great open field tackle as well. Upton Stout closed the gap in a hurry. I think they're explaining to Tyson Helton, the head coach, what are his options here. 
Makes me think the penalty is on North Texas. It's definitely going to be a hold, but with three timeouts, do you want to give him an extra down? Or do you want to have it be second and nine and a half? Holding offense number 65. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. The clock will start on the ready for play. Well, North Texas has showed good balance. Six different guys have carried the football, seven different receivers with catches. You want to make them cover every inch of the field, right? 100%. First and 20. On in, pump fake, and he'll throw it away. But now you're starting to think if you're Western Kentucky, you might get the ball back. Now they've got, you've got ineligible receivers downfield. They're gonna get Gabe Blair, who's on the backside of the play. The play was rolling right, throwing that curl route. There is no foul for ineligible player downfield. The quarterback legally grounded the ball. It'll be second down. Well, now I'm wondering if North Texas, how aggressive are they going to be here? Because they've got to consider they might have to give up the football. The tappers have all three timeouts. I'm, I'm, I'm at least going to try to get a big chunk here. Well, they keep it on the ground with Ragsdale, and he does a nice job. Now you got third manageable. Now if you're North Texas, I think you go fast. We've had some success outside with the quick screens. You've got Roberts up into the boundary. Third and seven, it's Ragsdale is going to try to run for it. He won't get there. I expect the Hilltoppers to get a timeout, and they do. Gabe Blair, 65's out of the game. He, he is shook up. He came straight over the sideline. So now Western Kentucky thinking, okay, we've got two timeouts. You're North Texas. You need a big punt. You got to pin them deep. Well, they've used the rugby style to, to change the field a little bit with the rugby style kicks. I'm... Nothing against Jalen Hall, but if I if I can get a chance to get Malachi Corley some touches, I'm putting him back there. That guy is dynamic with the ball in his hands. Fernando Rodriguez on the punt. Jalen Hall is deep. for the hilltop well I understand what he's trying to do he's trying to not give up he's trying to not give up extra field position here it's JT Springer I believe who hops on the ball number six take his eyes off the ball and start looking at the coverage team he's he did this earlier the ball hopped right to him Th this guy Springer he broke his wrist the second week of fall camp and they're thrilled to have him back and what a play he did on special teams that's a good hustle play right there So they've got all three timeouts and 23 seconds to work with. Lined up in a quad set. Fake to toss. Tight end. To the end. Oh, goodness. Roberts was wide open. I mean, he won't have a more wide open receiver all season. Well, he was, he was open immediately. And as soon as the fake was made, he was open. And all you got to do is throw a softball. You could have thrown that one underhand back there. But he's got to have a short memory here, come back and execute. And if you're Western Kentucky, you got to figure it out. You cannot allow a touchdown. I know disastrous play happened. You got to get over it. Sudden change. And that's completed to Roberts. He's down at the two. They'll get a timeout. 11 seconds to go in the half. Caleb Oliver with the tackle to keep him out of the end zone. Oliver, the Georgia Tech transfer. This is a great catch by Roberts. Way to help out your QB. And 
You know, sometimes when we get moving as QBs, we kind of get loose with our mechanics. And so you miss an open receiver. Then you come back on the next play, get loose, and you don't put it on your tight end's hands in front of him or he can actually turn. He's got to reach back. All right, one thing to consider here, they have a goal line package for Stone Earl. Sophomore from Keller, Texas, but it appears it's going to be Ani who's going to head back out there with his boys. Yeah, I don't know if I, I mean, I know they want to get him in with some challenges, yeah. but. This would seem like the ideal place for it. It's third down. Hilltoppers, boy, if they can hold him to a field goal, they would have to be elated. Gabe Blair is back in the game. That's good news for Mean Green. Tom out, Western Kentucky, their second, 32nd. All right, what are you thinking here, Sid? I, I mean, you got multiple options here. You can run it, you can throw it, and here's the deal. They, Austin Ani has run it off of the zone read and, and got decent yardage, right? So if you put yourself in a situation to run the ball, if he can read it, get the edge, easy touchdown. You got two options there. I don't want to put this ball up in the air unless I know I have a guy wide open. Number one, I, if it's incomplete, the clock's going to stop. Number two, I don't want to tip it off anybody's hands, getting picked off. This is where I tell my offensive line, look, fellas, we, we do what we do up front. Right, this is what this, this is reason. their offense. They want to be able to run the ball in any situation. Well, here's the moment. Third and goal at the two and a half yard line. Keep in mind, North Texas has timeouts. Ani's going to try to take himself. He won't get in. Great defensive stand from Western Kentucky. Jaquez Evans makes the tackle. I, I'm taking the points here. I'm, I'm going to kick this. Go up seven. Feel good about it. And you get the ball coming out. Yeah. Second half. So I'm, I'm taking the points here without question. I mean, I, I don't mind them running Austin. I don't like the rollout style they used on it. I mean, you could have done something a little more downhill. So Mooney out for the short field goal. He's been virtually automatic, just one miss this season. But these can be a little tricky, these angled kicks. It's going to be a 21-yard field goal attempt for Ethan Mooney. Barring a penalty, the final play of the half. And Mooney splits the uprights. It's homecoming. There's the homecoming queen. She's all smiles. Everyone having a great time here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. All right. A couple of quarterbacks we were excited to watch. And there are their numbers. Both guys statistically had terrific first halves. They did. Uh, playing big in a big game, and you expect your leaders to do that. These two guys have stepped up and, and really done a nice job of running their offense, um, I mean, in this big game. Okay. All right, so we've now come to the time you've all been waiting for. We're going to go into Sed's crystal ball, forecast the second half for us. Let's start. What do we expect from Western Kentucky? I think for Western Kentucky, they've got to try to get off the field on this first drive. They can't give up points. You don't want to go down two scores. And then when they get the ball offensively, they just have to get into a rhythm. Austin Reed has to find a rhythm with his receivers. There's been some tight coverage. He's got to do a better job with timing, and they've got to take advantage of defensive mistakes. All right, let's flip it. For North Texas, they did a lot of good things. What are you looking for from them in the third quarter? Put the, the gas pedal down to the floor right now. You get the ball coming out half. You go up two scores on this team. You maybe make them a little uncomfortable. Make them start doing some things they don't want to do. You've got to put the pedal to the metal. Well, there is a look at the leaders. Attaway, four carries, 34 yards. Damon Ward, as said, mentioned our last segment. What a first half. Kind of a shocker. Four catches for 101 yards and a touchdown. So Ani's getting loosed up, loosened up, pardon me, and, and getting ready for the start of this third quarter, this all-important game. The winner of this game is in sole possession of second place with just three games remaining after this game. And there are the statistical leaders for Western Kentucky, Urban Poindexter, six carries, 37 yards, and Daywood Davis on a lot of screens, four catches, 62 yards. 
Yeah, and they, they're going to need some output. A little more from, you got to get Malachi Corey involved, Corley involved. Get some of your top guys the ball out in space. Take advantage of some of these zone defenses when you get a chance. All right, we are ready for the start of the third quarter. North Texas will start out with the football. Western Kentucky to kick it off. Kalon Horton, he's so dangerous, but he will not bring it out. All right, rush yards by game in only Conference USA games. And yeah, the game against UT San Antonio, that seems like the outlier because they've been really good in the other three. Sometimes you get, get off script when somebody forces you to do something uh, you don't want to do, right? You, you kind of get a little bit off script. But they've had good balance today. You get 90 rush yards, 206 through the air. Attaway with the football. And Attaway looked like he had some room to work with, but brought down after a gain of a yard. It's a nice play by Broderick Martin, number 99. They love him to transfer from North Alabama. They said last week he went from being a star maker, setting up his other guys, to becoming a star player. Uh, what coach means by that is that that zero or one tech, you, you're taking on two two guys at a time, which allows everyone else. And again, wow, Attaway, no place to go, just stuffed at the point of attack. Jaden Hunter and Lorenzo Hernandez in on the play as well. What a great fill. All right, so third and long. Third downs in the first half. Three for eight for Mean Green. Ani, good pocket, finds Roberts. And North Texas gets the first down. This is a great job, and it's a little wide cross route. Ani does a nice job of staying to the field side, looking, look, and then coming back to his tight end. Didn't stare him down, but let him run his route and get open. Ani's got Roberts, who wants to go further down the field. And there is a drop there. We've got a flag on the play. We've got a couple of flags. They were looking for Damon Ward there, number eight, who had the huge first half. All his catches came on that same play. He kept running that little Z curl, rolling to that side. Ineligible player downfield. Offense, number 54. Five yard penalty remains first half. We got Fubechi Wee Woo. But look at this throw right here. Watch him work the coverage. Looks down the middle, looks left first, and then comes back to his tight end. It's on the back side, but you, you know your guy's radius. He's able to reach those big paws out, Jake Roberts, and make the play. First and 15. Ani looks to his left, throws, and that is caught by Shorter, and good that Shorter's back out there. He got hurt early in the game, and he is a big weapon for him. Big target, 6'2", 218 pounds. He leads the team in receiving touchdowns and second in yards. 10 yards on the play, brings up second five. It's a good job of, of just shielding the defender with his body, making a hands catch. Keep it on the ground with Ragsdale, and a flag comes in in the area of offensive holding. There is another flag closer to the Western Kentucky side of the field. Oh my good, Casey Marika. Left tackle. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, defense number 35, lined up in the neutral zone, holding offense number 77. Those fouls were all set, second down. Mike Allen being offside on the defense, and that's lined up in the neutral zone. And Casey Marika with the hold. Second and five from the 44-yard line.
Gums in motion, blitz is coming. On he steps up, and he misses. I'm not sure whether he was looking for Roderick Burns or whether it was Damon Ward who was sort of in between the two guys. I think he was looking for Roderick Burns, and this is where, you know, when you're sliding your feet, you've got to keep your platform right. He kind of gets a little wide, and his elbow drops. Ball sails away. But, man, what a great pickup by that offensive line with the blitz that was coming there. He had time to step up, room to move, manu manipulate the pocket, and, and get to an open receiver. Burns in motion, third and five. Ani gets rid of it. The pressure coming. Ball is short of his intended target, Marquise Gums. And this is a good job bringing pressure. Austin Ani does not stand in and throw it. He kind of shies away. He kind of short arms it. He's got a strong arm, but you can't make that out cut. Short arming that throws, pulling away from it. Rodriguez on to punt. Hall is back deep for the Hilltoppers. And this one's going to take a North Texas bounce, a really good North Texas bounce. It's going to get all the way down to the six yard line. 50 yard kick, no return. We're coming right back. Uh, this guy right here. You need John Malice on your team. Every crew has a tech manager who literally is a utility guy. He can do everything. He, he's already been up in the booth twice. This is his last game with our crew. He's moving on. But this guy, one of the most valuable players on our team. Without question. Like, a few of my first games, the dude, dude ran like a quarter mile to come out and get me, get me into the venue. Like, always has a smile on his face. Doesn't, doesn't care. Just one of the coolest cats ever. Uh, was he missed? He will be missed. Time. First and ten for the Hilltoppers from their own six-yard line. Urban Poindexter, the running back. Reed wants to throw, gets it to Corley, and Corley can pick up seven yards on first down. Quinn Whitlock forced him out of bounds. Corley now has got four catches, 56 yards in the game. What do you think of Austin Reed's performance thus far? I love what he's done. He's, he's missed a few guys, there's, but there's been some extenuating circumstances, right? There, there's been some looks from, from North Texas that have given his receivers some problems. It's Corley again, and boy, he gets hit hard. Right at the line of scrimmage, nowhere to go. Trying to see who made that hit it was Mason Richards. He has really flashed. Started his career at Eastern New Mexico. He's, he's a Texas kid, Bolas from Texas. And Corley really took, I mean, he took the brunt of this hit. He almost goes back too fast to the ball. He should settle there. Oh, it was Larry Nixon. Yeah, it was Nixon who made the hit, not Richards. Big shot, but his dad is a former Arena League player, Larry Nixon. The second. Played with me. Yeah. With the Rattlers. At the beginning of this game, it felt a little bit like an Arena game. I thought they were going to score on every possession. That would be glorious. Things have slowed but down. But somebody's got to play defense some defense. Defense showed up. Yeah, they gotta, somebody's got to play some defense. A critical third down coming up here early in the third quarter. One score game. I want to remind everyone the winner of this game will be in sole possession of second place and will control their own destiny to get into the Conference USA Championship game. Good news, Corley's up. Seems like he's going to be okay. They're going to need him in this football game. Without question. Provides too much on the offensive side here. They keep it on the ground. Urban Poindexter, and somehow he gets the first down and more all the way up to the 24-yard line. I wasn't sure about the play call, but that worked beautiful. Well, you, get him, you get him spread out. You get numbers that are favorable in the box. Ani the throw, a little pump and go. And he was looking for Matheson. And Austin Reed gets, gets fooled a little bit. They try to run the takeoff off of the, the key screen that they've been running. 
He gets fooled. Should have worked side the sideline directly in front of North Texas's bench. Had a better chance there. They rolled coverage the opposite direction. It's fortunate that wasn't picked off. Both quarterbacks have done a good job protecting the football. Reed, you now you played quarterback at every level. Did he need to throw that one that hard? I just think any any time you're trying to throw outside, there's a tendency to try to get it out there as fast as possible because there's so much space. I, I don't mind the pace. I mind where it hit. High ball inside. You need to get it out there quick because these DBs drive. They're not moving. They're not backpedaling as fast. They're slow walking out. He needs a big play. Four for nine on third down so far. They're bringing extra guys. Reed's got to get rid of it. High throw, but it's caught. It's going to be good enough for a first down. Michael Matheson. Had to go up high to get that football. Wow. Matheson with the man's man catch right here. 13 yards. Watch him climb the ladder. That's a great burst off the ball, but he climbs the ladder. Tough catch. Keeps the drive going. Look for him eventually to take a shot to Daewoo Davis on this backside. Every Poindexter, he gets hit hard, but falls forward for a gain of three. <laughs> KD Davis, we haven't mentioned KD's name once. That's the first time. Been able He's their it. absolute stud linebacker, the captain of the team. He led the team in tackles the last three seasons. Coming into today, leading the team in tackles with 84 tackles. That's number one in Conference USA and ninth in America amongst FBS schools. He had 12 tackles last week against UTSA. He finds the football, people. Reed, the screen to the outside, and it's Jalen Hall with the catch. Good gain on the play. KD has gotten some love. Look at those numbers in his career, Sid. Very impressive. Very impressive, and, and one of those dudes you, you want to root for. The team loves him. He is the leader of this ball club. And he thought about leaving. He went right. in the transfer portal and said, you know what? What's best for me and what's best for North Texas is for me to stay. And I, I love that, that he wants to finish what he started. Fantastic. All right, we are going to step away. We've got a good one. One score game. We're coming right back to Western Kentucky. We've got a good one. North Texas leads Western Kentucky 20 to 13. Arlo said Bonner with you. On behalf of our entire stadium crew, glad you're with us. We had high expectations for this game set, and the two teams have delivered thus far. We have. Uh, just enough defense for us offensive guys that don't like to see it, <laughs> and plenty of offense at times. Uh, this is going to come down into the fourth quarter. Might be a last possession type game. Well, North Texas knows all about that from last week. He came down to the last possession, but it was UTSA getting the touchdown with just seconds left on the clock. It was heartbreak for North Texas. And West Kentucky, look, they came out and North Texas jumped on them. It was 14 nothing in a flash, but a nice response from the Hilltoppers. They've got the football. Big third down coming up. The freshman's in at running back. That could be big if they bring a blitz package. Let's see how he does in pass protection. Oh, they're going to have Austin Reed keep it, and it works. Reed puts the shoulder down and gets the first down. He, he was real physical with Gaddy there. Saw he had a DB coming to get him, and then he lowered the yeah, shoulder. He, that was one of those good business decisions. Like, that guy's too little. I'm 200-some-odd pounds. Well, Reed started two for six since then, 18 of 25. He has settled in nicely. He has. And, and listen, he's had some guys go up and make some big time plays for him. But that's what you need when you're when you're really trying to to get things back on track and get moving. Reed blitz is coming. Got to get rid of it. Throws it up. And that could have been picked. That was that was a dangerous throw. He was looking for Malachi Corley. I mean, there were a lot of guys coming. This just needs to happen uh, uh, half a second earlier. 
Well, there's an example of the defensive coordinator who we just love, Phil Bennett. Got to give Austin Reed some different looks, and, and Phil Bennett has been doing this for a long time. He's been a defensive coordinator at 10 different schools, coached at 12 different schools. Seth Luttrell able to convince him to come out of retirement. And how about that? He began coaching 1978, the year his head coach was born. <laughs> he knows a thing or two about defense. He's, he's... All right, let's take a look at the road traveled for Phil Bennett. A couple of stops at A&M. Uh, he's seen a lot of America, it's fair to say. He has. <laughs> I tell you what, man, he is one of the funnest guys to talk to on the phone. Oh, he's great. Very engaging, um, honest. He was just helping out Seth, trying to right, find a defense coordinator. When Seth's like, well, why don't what about you? you? What about you? Yeah. <laughs> Stop recommending somebody else. We already got the guy we want. Yeah, that's fantastic. Another big third down for the Hilltoppers. And they're going to keep it on the ground. And LT Sanders is close. Decision time here. You've got fourth and two at the 40-yard line, down by a touchdown. Let's roll. I'm going for it. Now, first and foremost, if you're the mean green defense, do not jump. Watch the football. That's the first thing. Up front, watch the football. The play clock is now at 15. They've still got time to get up there and get organized. If you're the Hilltoppers, you've got to make sure you're connected together on this play. You want to keep this drive going, make sure everyone's connected. And Reed's going to keep it, and Reed has the first down. Larry Nixon, the third, with the tackle. And he's a big, strong athlete, Austin Reed. He is. I mean, keep in mind, he leads the team in rushing touchdowns this year with six. He had two last week. 6'2", 230 pounds. And, and, and has a little burst, yep. right? So has some quickness. You get that moving downhill, it's tough to stop. Tyson Helton's done a masterful job using the transfer portal to get himself starting quarterbacks. No well, Bailey Zappi, but Austin Reed playing great football for the Hilltoppers. Reed gets it out in space. It's Corley. I thought Corley might try to cut it back. He said he takes a hit and goes out at the 30-yard line as he runs into Quinn Whitlock, who's a pretty sturdy, stout defender. With a seven-yard gain on first down. Right? It's so nice when you can read the box, get the ball outside early with the RPO, as he just did there. You have a run or pass option. Doing a good job of, of getting it going, keeping the defense off balance. And the other thing they're doing is a nice long drive, their longest drive of the game, keeping that North Texas offense on the sideline. Reed with all kinds of time. Looking for Corley, and he makes the catch at the 13-yard line. Well, there he needed that big arm. He, he did, and it, but, but if he gets it out early on time, you allow Corley to possibly run with this football. Well, that's a... Fantastic throw. 16th play of the drive, and it's LT Sanders picking up a yard on first down. Got that power. See him waiting, 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 and the safety has to run all the way over the top. He had a post come inside. The safety runs all the way over the top just to get out there. Logan Wilson puts a big hit. That's a great job of concentrating over there by Malachi Corley. Current drive. We got the 17th play coming up. They've already gone 81 yards. Approaching seven minutes on this drive. On they give it to Daywood Davis. Can he get to the edge? No. How about the speed? Mason Richards. Great speed. Uh, this guy was under recruited, but he's got a lot of talent. I mean, that's 6'3, 245 pounds. I mean, that is an explosive athlete running sideline to sideline, running down Daywood Davis. I mean, this would be a win for North Texas. You can hold them to a field goal attempt. Third down. Western Kentucky, 6 of 12 on third downs. It's better than their season average of 36% conversion. Third and eight. Reed. 
Good pocket to the end zone to Davis. Oh, and that's broken up at the last minute. That is some kind of defensive play there by Logan Wilson. Tell you what, this is a last second swipe. He's, he's beat. But guess what, young folks? Don't give up on a play. Run through the hands. And you see the strip right there. If you're Davis, you've got to reach out and take that ball. No matter who's on you, take it. You got an opportunity to put seven up. Great finish by Logan Wilson. Narvison on for the field goal attempt. It's going to be a 29 yard attempt from the left hash mark. Narvison to kick. He missed it. He missed it. So, how about that drive? Incredible drive. No points. North Texas gets the stop, and they'll have the football when we come back. Saturday spotlight, number 22, Kansas State. 38 nothing over Oklahoma State in the third quarter. Georgia Bulldogs, they lead Florida 28 to three. How about the Hurricanes defeating Virginia in four overtimes? And hey, it's Sandy Bach, man, it's his crew, right? Come on, UConn get the fourth win of the season, the most since 2015 as they defeat BC 13 to three. Go Jim Mora, go Huskies. That's big time. How, how about the disappointment for Western Kentucky? A 19 play, 83 yard drive, eight minutes, zero points. <laughs> I mean, not you had to rub it in, huh? I did. <laughs> man. They'll keep it on the ground. A day -E nice carry. 12 yards on the play. Stone Earl is in the game at quarterback. You know, we were we were told they have a package for him. I thought it would mainly be in goal line, but here he is. I see Austin Ani. He's just right there behind his head coach. Look this running package, right? I mean, it, he may pull it and throw it, but. Well, he's going to keep it himself. Stone Earl. And they pick up a couple first downs. Coach Luttrell is going to look like a genius. I got to say, it makes me. <laughs> I'm always a guy like, to me, I like a one quarterback system. Well, I just think for the rhythm of the game. Well, I think at this point, you, you feel very comfortable with what your defense is doing. Right? You, you feel comfortable. Your defense is pretty much shut them down. So you feel comfortable. You want to get him out there for a series. It doesn't hurt when you can open up the drive with like a 13 play or a 13 yard run. They keep it on the ground. Goodness, guy was almost decapitated. That's going to be a defenseless player and a 15 yard penalty. The fans may have loved it, but Caleb Oliver is going to get the flag there. We don't want those kind of hits on players anymore. This is the new world we're living in. It's Oscar Attaway. That was a, that's a cheap shot. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 20, plays under review. And this this seems like an easy call, Sid. Yeah, it looks like he's, he's on his way down. Yeah, oh, goodness, that's 100%. the worst kind. 100%. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see uh, Caleb Oliver anymore today. If he's not being if he's not being tackled from behind down and he's able to lower his head into the to the defender, then it wouldn't be targeting. However, he is being tackled and you watch his momentum, his upper body's. I mean, really just I mean, they're they're, they're taught now not to do this. This is a mental and physical mistake. And he launches himself directly into the helmet. And the worst part is the player's still down. So Attaway now with the help of the trainers is going to be helped off the field. And Pierce is also something going on with his right leg. Targeting. I don't. How is that not targeting? Explain that to me. I, I, I don't understand. I, I don't know. That's either. helmet to I, helmet. Listen. Unfortunately, it's subjective, and there's nothing subjective about the hit we just saw with the helmet to helmet. Um, I don't know how that's not target. Uh, they're saying he leaned with the shoulder. It did not appear that way to us when we saw the review, but you know we respect the heck out of the tough job the officials have to do. So play on. One hundred percent. Third down. And Austin Ani is back in the game for North Texas.
And timeout, Western Kentucky. So that's their first timeout. Comes with 3.07 remaining in the third quarter. Apparently they did not like what their defense had set up for that play. And we'll see if using that timeout this early in the second half comes back to haunt them. Tyson Helton, he's got lots to consider right now. His team trailing by a touchdown. He's in control of the offense, wants to get that group back out on the field, and it needs his defense to come up with a stop. What are you thinking here if you're uh, North Texas? What's the offensive play call here for Mike Blesch? I, I don't think... I don't think it has to be anything dynamic, right? You've, you've had some success with some rollouts, getting your quarterback outside the pocket. They haven't c covered the Z curl off of a roll. I maybe go there and run something backside that comes across the field into it. All right, third down, third and six. Ani. Almost there, was in and out of the hands of Barkey's Gums. Hendrick Simpkins in coverage, number 16. Tell you, that's a big time throw by Ani. Puts it on his hands, gives his receiver a chance to make a tough contested throw. You get man coverage. You like to see Gums maybe give a, a stair step upfield before he comes across and not just run directly across the field. That's too easy to cover. You've got to break his cushion down and make him move off his platform before you cross the field. Rodriguez to punt. Hall is going to go for the fair catch at his own 27-yard line. All right, let's take a look around the Conference USA. Seb, what do you see in the headlines? Frank Harris, player of the week. Shocker. That's what I see. I mean, Khalif Alisi, we talked about him earlier. What a game last week he had against UAB. Yeah, and Chris Reynolds, one of the most likable guys and players who's in this conference. And how about the turnaround at FIU? Big time. Coach Mack doing a nice job down at FIU. We'll be down there in a couple weeks. Couple weeks looking FAU, forward to it. FIU, big rivalry game in South Florida. Said and I'll be down there looking forward to that. Been a fan of Coach Mack since he was at San Jose State. First and 10 for Western Kentucky. And they will keep it on the ground. LT Sanders, the ball carrier, flag comes in. Katie Davis is pretty excited. Holding offense number 78. 10 yard penalty remains first down. Pentavious Leslie adds a couple of flags today on the big left guard. He's on the Outland watch list. It's Katie Davis there stepping up to make the play. So that'll push back the Hilltoppers. It'll be first and 20. Penalties have hurt Western Kentucky in this game. Six for 55 yards, Wolfie. Not what they're accustomed to. They give it to Sanders, and Sanders gets to the 20-yard line. This game feels like it's getting more and more physical. It, it is, because I mean, it's time's running down. So much at stake. <laughs> a lot at stake. And this is a game that was all offense in the first half. It's been all defense in the third quarter. Western Kentucky hurt by the fact that they missed a chip shot field goal on their last drive. All kinds of movement. Oh goodness, that is a terrific play by Quinn Whitlock. But he is a difference maker for them. He changes their defense. This is a great read and you bring pressure. So the quarterback can't hold the ball here. He's got to get it out of his hand. And Whitlock, that's what I mean by being connected. You've got to be connected. This defense was connected. You bring pressure. You've got everybody tightly covered for the quick throws. I mean, you're third in a country mile. Third and 20. They had a third and 27 earlier and they elected to run the football. And they're going to run it again. Well, Sanders gets, gets a big chunk of it back. That'll help for field position. Wow. 
Right here. Watch him blow this thing up. 15 yard carry there for Sanders. Gonna do a better job of blocking out in front of those type of plays. Ellard on the punt. Rod Burns with the fair catch. 52 seconds to go in the third quarter. North Texas now with the football. We saw Stone Earl start the last series. See who comes out at quarterback. I, I can probably assure you it won't be Stone Earl right now. He's had a drive. Now you got to go and finish. You, you've got to go put points up here. Ani in the game, 14 for 22, 230 yards and two touchdowns. He's played well. Ragsdale will be the running back to start this series. I think the big stop for him today is he hasn't turned it over. Right, he hasn't thrown that pick. He's got thrown nine picks this season, none today. Done a nice job of taking care of the football. It looks like Western Kentucky might be bringing pressure. And Ani's going to get out of that play. Ani the throw, and he's got a man wide open. It's Macklin. Jamori Macklin down at the 22 yard line. Pelosi makes the tackle. Wow. There's Jamori Macklin wide open. The redshirt freshman for Kirkwood, Missouri. I don't know where his eyes went. 52 he, yards he there. Literally Sid. audibles to that play to give him that opportunity. And Halasi's eyes get lost inside staring at the QB. Ani. Well, he ran out of got him. He went out of bounds. He ran out of bounds, so that's not going to count. Yeah, you can see the judge there. He took that. Whenever they don't have a hat on, it means somebody was out of bounds. He may have just went to supercuts. Tell you what. Well, the field gets real huge. wide if you if you come outside of it. It does. It does. So if you're forced out, you got to reestablish by two steps inbounds on your own. Illegal touching, offense number nine. The receiver went out of bounds on his own return and was first to touch touch the ball. Lost it down at the previous spot. It'd be second down. All right, he had the wrong number there. He called it a number nine. It was definitely on number 41, Kalon Horton. All right, watch 41 on the wheel route there. He's, he's he went out on his own. Yeah, he did. So if you're forced out, you get two steps back in, but he's outside on his own. Ani pressure in his face, and he completes it. It's Roberts, and it's going to be first and goal at the seven. It's a beautiful throwback to the tight end. Start rolling right. Get everything, all the action going to the right side of the field, and you sneak your big tight end back across the field. All right, that's going to do it for the third quarter. So when we come back, North Texas. There is a look by our score by quarter. It's 2013, a scoreless third quarter. All right, get your phones out. Time for the player of the game. Scan the QR code on the screen. Make your pick. Austin Ani for North Texas. If you're not named Austin, you got no chance at the player of the game today. Austin Reed, your other option <laughs> from Western Kentucky. I like it. They, they can tell me in my ear it's Austin. That's got to be right. Well, you know, if you're talking quarterback play. Yeah. And, listen, and then all of a sudden they throw in a stone. You're like, wait, yeah. what? All right, here we go. First in goal for Mean Green. Horton is in there at running back. They're going to put him in motion. They're going to get him the football in space. Watch out, everybody. He runs into his own guy. And brought down at the five-yard line. That play had some real potential. I thought he was Horton. in too much of a hurry. What do you think? Exactly. Sometimes you got to slow down and read a block and yeah. then explode off the block. And, and you, you tell our guys to read rear ends. Where is his butt right. and then What's the angle? Back. Yes, read rear ends and go. Yeah, he was just in too much of a hurry there. That could have been a touchdown. Instead, second and goal from just outside the five. Now 
Now Ragsdale's in at running back. Couple of tight ends on the near side. On he, he's got his man and that's touchdown. Ragsdale gets the score, touchdown North Texas. He's a great play right here. Well designed, not well covered. Someone skips a, a man, doesn't stay with the guy of Ragsdale out of the backfield. All right, Mooney's on for the extra point. Trying to make this a 14 point game. And the extra point is blocked. And West Kentucky still got it. Colossi. They could have returned that for two points. So it's a 13 point game. Let's go back to the touchdown set. Well, this is a well designed play. You're going to get action going right into the face of the defensive pressure. You see six right out of the backfield. No one accounts for him. One of those three defenders off that right side has got to get a hat on him. You can't let him free release out. I mean, that's literally as easy as they come. You see a big look here. Somebody's got to put a hat on him. Can't let him free release. You have to smell a rat. When it's that easy, you got to smell a rat and, and, and shut it down. Four plays, 74 yards, only a minute and 41 seconds off the clock. And now we know that Western Kentucky is going to have to move the ball quickly. Down two scores. We still got almost a full quarter. They don't need to necessarily change what they're doing offensively, but they need points. They, well, they need, I don't want to say bigger chunks, but they need to be cleaner, right? They've had penalties, some struggles, sacks. penalties, uh, uh, missed blocks at times. So they've had about two or three good plays in a row, and then all of a sudden they have a couple bad plays. They've got to clean that up play with efficiency and, and finish this game out if they want a chance to win this game. Mooney's kick. Will Matheson bring it out? He says no. All right, let's see what happens here on the extra point. That was blocked easily. That's number three. Coming flying through there. Mooney had no chance. Oh, Jaquez Evans. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary reckless, receiving team number 89. Penalties out to distance to the goal, first down. The hits just keep coming. Asher, Asher Alberdine. And now you've got to go into that huddle. All right, Austin Reed, it's time to step it up. First four drives, 10 points. Last four drives is three points. And it really felt when they missed that chip shot field goal after the 19 play drive, it took a little bit of the wind out of their sails. Urban oh, oh. Poindexter, oh. a good carry, but the flag comes in. I think they're going to get Jalen Hall for holding on the outside, the receiver number zero. Offense number zero. He's in good shape. Then and then the to the goal. Still for a Or he's in good shape here. And then the, the defender tries to break away to go run. And that's when you got to let go. That's why you got to let it go. You can't allow the officials to see that jersey pull away. Right? Look, they're going backwards again. This has been an unfortunate theme in the second half for Western Kentucky. We're talking about a team that scores 37 points a game, and that's with a 20-point game a week ago. They're at 13 right now, so they're struggling offensively. On the delay, it's Urban Poindexter, and he gets to the eight-yard line. Mazin Richards is down. One of our players to watch. All right, we'll take a break. Mean Green lead the Hilltoppers 26-13. I'm Ari Wolf alongside my man Sid Bonner. Beautiful sunset here. This is a game where Western Kentucky, if they don't come back, they're going to look back at all the mistakes 
because they've hurt themselves a lot, particularly in this second half. Too many penalties. And they've had problems in protection. Right here, they're backed up. This play will start from their own nine yard line. Second down. Second and 14. Quick screen to the outside. And Corley picks up a first down, a much needed first down at the 26 yard line. And here they go, they're gonna get up on the ball. It's a good start. Four receivers to the top of your screen. Reed's going down the field. He's got an open man in Mean Green territory. Great play there. Michael Matheson with the catch. 39 yards on the play. This all takes protection. You line up in a quads right. You run someone through the post. Two post routes and then a wheel behind that. Reed with time. I mean, what a pocket. That's, what, that's one where you got to throw you, or run the ball. You can't, you're not going to get a call on that. That's not, not a, not P.I. You've got so many guys out in coverage. There's a lot of softness in the middle of that field. And that's where you'd love to see Austin Reed, who is a tremendous runner, take off and run. Your all line gave you a great pocket. Go find some positive yards. Second and 10. Davis in the backfield. Oh, a little end around. Get it to your speed guy. Good blocking in front, but a flag comes in, and Matheson out of bounds at the 13 yard line. I think this one's coming back. He had a convoy in front of him. But he wanted to run by the convoy again, being patient, right? Letting those guys get out and block. 22 yards on the play, but unfortunately for Western Kentucky, this one's going to come back. I don't know where the, where the call was, who they called it on. But they're struggling with guys getting caught for holding on the outside. Holding, offense number 17. 10-yard penalty, second down. That's Dalvin Smith, the redshirt sophomore. Just being out in space, you got to run your feet. And, and every one of these guys will make go out and make great contact initially, right? But then when the defender starts to run away, you got to run your feet, stay with them. Well, Coach Helton, there's going to be some teaching moments. Win or lose in this one. Reed, he had to get rid of it, and that is complete. No ball comes out. Are they going to rule it a catch? Wow, they're going to rule it a catch for Unless Corley. he stepped out right before. They better get up on the ball and try to get this play run. Two officials are still talking about it. They're saying it's a catch, and then he lost the ball. I mean, he might have put a foot down. One, on two. Field. Is the ball was possessed, fumbled forward and out of bounds. It'll be returned to the spot of the fumble. Uh, that's an incomplete pass. I, I, would, a catch. I would review it. Yeah. I would challenge that. He only gets he gets one foot down. He makes a move. But John, before the second foot lands, that ball is coming out. But is it two feet or a football move? Which is it? Because he does make a football move. He does. Trying to turn up I mean, field. look, it, it's, it's a tough call, but to me, in real time and then seeing it replay. I didn't think it was a catch. Because he does make a football move as he tries to turn up field. All right, so he goes up, here we go. One, and then as he kind of plants that second foot, it's out. And I would judge by his reaction. If you go back and look at that, Malachi Corley's reaction as he's laying After the expedited ground. review, the pass was incomplete. It'll be third down. You can, by his reaction, too, right on the field, that's, and they got that one right. I love the expedited. Well, I was a little unsure because I got the targeting one wrong. I wasn't sure, but I, this one, I'll, and I still think that other call was targeting, but we could take that up with the guys after the game. And so that brings that back. So now third down.
And by the way, I love the expedited review. Fantastic. It's a wonderful addition to college football. 100%. You got geniuses up here who know the sport better than anybody. Let them see it, make the call, and move on. They're going to keep it on the ground. Urban Point Dexter, and I think he's got the first down. Had to get to the 25, and he gets there. Cam Roberts in the tackle. That's multiple times they've gone to the run game. Right on third and intermediate. Get a touchdown here. Things are going to get real interesting. Real interesting. At the right time. Well, they're playing with a sense of urgency now. They, they got their rhythm back. Well, I, I feel I feel like there were times where they had it, and then all of a sudden you, you get derailed yeah. by something. A penalty get behind the sticks, that. right, and throws a whole drive off. Got Jalen Hall backside, man to man, with no safety help. Well, that's such good defense from Deshaun Gaddy. I mean, he's just right there. I. I There was really never draw, any drive off the ball from Jalen Hall that forced Gaddy to move, right? He kind of comes off the ball really under control. Gaddy doesn't move. He sits there and drives. That's a fantastic play by Deshaun Gaddy. Second got, and ten. Look at all this room inside here. Oh, they're bringing everybody. Reed's got to get rid of it, and it's picked off. Logan Wilson gets the pick. North Texas football. What a game for Logan Wilson. I mean, well, you, you need to be working your ex receiver here, your backside. And then he, he rushes this throw. And Matheson is, is not ready for it. It's high and inside. It's not even close. This is kind of a I'm in too big of a hurry and I throw it way too quick he I mean, might have been think he was throwing to he there. may have been trying to throw that to Daewoo Davis but never sees this man here backing up thinking he's close closer to Matheson than he than he thought but I, I'm working backside you got Jalen Hall matched up with no help inside. All right, so think about it now. So they've twice had great drives and have come away with zero points in the second half. I mean, that's emotionally just defeating. You've got to get a guy on the ground there. Uh, here's Horton. Horton's making guys miss. I mean, he's must-see TV when he has the football. 100%. He's, he's running around and fast forward. Everybody else is at regular speed. And Kendrick Simpkins able to bring him down, but got to get Horton as many touches as possible. He is a playmaker. All right, Ani's coming out of the game. And Stone Earl back in there at quarterback. A day right to the right of Stone Earl. And Stone Earl's going to keep it. And look at him. Getting through some traffic. I guess now we know why they put Stone Earl in the game. And look, if you're trying to just milk the clock right now and you're going to run the football, he gives you an extra runner. An extra runner and an extra blocker. Yep. Right? So you're, you're, you're good. 11 yards on the carry for Stone Earl. Sophomore from Keller, Texas. Michael like Ragsdale back in the game at tailback. Yeah, Ragsdale's in. The day he comes to the sideline, and there, I would imagine, work the play clock. 100%. Shouldn't snap with anything more than four seconds on the clock. And Earl fakes like he's going to pass it, and then you got to go down and bounds, and he does the prudent thing there. Upton Stout with the tackle, 21, a redshirt freshman from Houston, who played for North Texas with the transfer portal, now playing for Western Kentucky. And I don't know if you noticed, but he was getting the business down in that in front of the North Texas bench right now. I bet he was. <laughs> the business. You're a traitor. You left us. A day back in the game. 
And they love Stout. They he's one of the most impactful guys of all the transfers. And Earl's going to throw it, and he's going to complete it. Barkey's gums with the catch. He's brought down at the 39-yard line. This is a, another well-designed play. You get your trips to the left side. You get your two outside receivers wide. You get gums to wrap just around the outside backer. And what a good throw. Really nice throw. By Stone Earl puts it on his body. And you, you know the West Kentucky thinks he's going to run the football. They were not expecting that. Great play call and gums. He is a playmaker for them. A couple catches today. Got four touchdowns this season. Well, you got two big tight ends that can get down the field and make plays. Dayee, the ball carrier, look at a day. No one's gonna catch him. Touchdown, Mean Green. Wow. 39-yard touchdown scamper for number 39. Fantastic drive, and, and listen, you and I are both questioning why they put Earl in the game. Yeah, yeah, they, this is their plan. This kid comes in, and this is a, a closer type of drive they just had. They just dagger, closed the game. A dagger drive. And a, a day with the score. There, there was one point of the year where a day and, and, uh, and Attaway were averaging over seven yards. All right, you guys voted. Fan of the game, who was it? Fan one, fan two, or fan three? You got a prediction? You say the kids are undefeated. Which one are you going with? One I'm or going two? With one. All right, I'm going with I'm going with the mascot. I'm going with three. Fan two one. There you go. I think it was you know, I think it's the pom poms. I think that closed the deal. Alright. Best fan base. How about North Texas on the road? Look, they're all like celebrating. Colin, congratulations, congratulations. We're up three scores. And no return here. All right. We see the standings. They're both three and one. I think it's safe to say at this point, North Texas will be jumping Western Kentucky to get to four and one in conference play. I mean, what a performance by North Texas. Defensively, most, most I mean, important. 485 yards of offense, 322 through the air, 163 on the ground. I mean, that, that's pretty awesome. Four for 11 on third down. Well, you give up a 16 play drive and shut it down. Yeah. I mean, 19 play, just 19 it was even play worse. Play. <laughs> Irvin Point Dexter, and he's keeps track. Check that, it's LT Sanders who picks up 13 yards. How about this for West Kentucky? They got nine penalties, a muffed punt, a missed 29 yard field goal, and they threw that pick when they were driving. Reed's gonna have to check it down. And it's Sanders with the catch. Sifo Luotu with the tackle does a nice job. Richard Freshman. I mean, I'm, I'm almost stunned right now with what's happening. So I thought this was going to be a shootout. Mahal makes the catch, but great coverage. Rich Tejada. You know, when John Davis went out after the first game of the season, you thought, boy, they're really going to miss him. But Tejada has stepped up big time. He has sophomore out of Frisco, Texas, which is right down the street. Reed's going to air this one out, but his receiver's got no chance on it. David Davis got caught up with the DB and had no chance on the play. Rich Tejada again in coverage. I mean, coming off the loss to in San Antonio to UTSA and the way that they lost, I wondered what kind of North Texas team we were going to see. And boy, they answered the call today. Yeah, well, it could be one or two things, right? When we were that close, we should have beat them. Right. And they just had one more opportunity than we did, one more chance. Uh, it looks like they've turned it, and this defense has been stellar. Oh, almost another turnover. He threw that one into traffic. Looking for Jalen Hall. They're just playing so with so much confidence right now. 
Right, and they don't have to worry really about the run game anymore. You could be completely dialed in. The guys up front coming after the quarterback. Just keep the receivers in front of you. Well, the fumble on the punt return, interception and missed field goal, and nine penalties. I mean, that, that is crazy for this offense that has been so good. You, again, you only 13 points. When, and look, they won last week, but they only scored 20 points. Correct. And that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's this offense is so, has been so good over the last couple of years. You, you expect them to regularly go out and put up 35 minimum, right? And, Put up 20 last week. They're at 13 right now. Well, it's fourth down here. They're one for one on fourth down so far in the game. Fourth and eight. They want to have any hope of a miracle. They got to get a first down. Blitz is coming. Reed gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. Well-timed blitz, Phil Bennett draws it up. It'll be North Texas football when we come back. North Texas 33, Western Kentucky 13, 7.05 to go in the floor. Time for Seds burning questions. All right, who makes the college football playoff, Sed? Georgia, Alabama, or Tennessee? Georgia, Tennessee. Okay, do TCU or Oregon have a path to the playoff? There's a path. Will they get there? No. Will I ever find my golf balls from yesterday? No, but somebody will, and they'll call you and let you know they got them since they say, Ari. <laughs> I made quite, I made a sizable donation you to did. the good people here. You did make a sizable Well, Marty Tarr showed us the way, man. What a golfer. He did. What a stud. He's a pretty good golfer. Pretty good. Get him next time. I don't think we're going to see a steady diet of running the football. How about this run? Oh. He's going to lose a couple yards in Ragsdale. Close to a first down. And, and right now, you know, if you're, if you're Coach Helton, you're looking for effort and yeah. finish from your guys, right? You're, you still got to have that want to no matter what the scoreboard says. All, all is not lost. You're looking for guys to finish. Look, when you talk to Coach Helton, he's not just a coach. He's a teacher, right? And you're teaching football, but you're teaching life lessons as well. I mean, let's see who steps up here for the Hilltoppers. Surprised if Ani hikes this football before it gets under five, right at five. It's Ragsdale. And he's got the first down and more. Clock will stop temporarily till the chain gang gets in place. Ani's coming all the way to the sideline to get the play. I think they're going to use this whole clock. What a performance. How about Ani? 308 yards, two touchdowns, most importantly, no turnovers. No turnovers, right? He's hovered right around that one or two a game. But to, to come out in this game and play clean. 500 play yards clean of total offense. Football. That's clean. No turnovers. Great job from the backside. A day short gain. Bring up second down. Caleb Oliver does a nice job. He's still playing hard. He's still getting after it. Still lots of time on the play clock. Job defending the run. Day another carry. They'll bring up third and long. I don't expect them to attempt a passing play in this situation. What do you think, Zed? No. no. Uh, I think they'll keep it on the ground. If it is a pass, it'll be something like a screen, a key screen, something quick, maybe to the tight end and the flat. But it won't be anything down the field where it could cause harm. And and if he does throw it, then well, and it's Stone Earl coming in at quarterback. I think both of us weren't sure why they would go with the second quarterback, but it's been very effective. He has played well in limited duty at quarterback. And he is looking to pass, and he's going to complete it. And 
and stays in bounds. play a day to stay in bounds. Jaden Hunter the tackle. They get the first down and more and more clock. A lot of confidence shown in Stone Earl. Yeah. In this situation. Throwing the ball in that situation. But you get him outside where he's either going to use his legs or hit his guy on the flat route, which he does a nice job. Well, while we have time, what do you think about on these prospects? Look, the XFL is coming back. The CFL is an option. Obviously, the NFL is the goal. Uh, I, I where think, do you see him getting a chance next year? I, well, it's got to be one of those leagues. He'll he'll get a shot. I mean, yep. he's got a big time arm, and I tell you, the jump mechanically that he's made from watching him just a couple years ago, where it was kind of coming out of his hand real squirrely, you know, hadn't been sound mechanically. I think he's he can throw the ball. It's just will they look past him being 29 years old right, right. and give him an opportunity? To throw, but when guys take care of their bodies, now we're in a different, different era, sure. right? So you can play longer as Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers; those guys are able to show everybody. So I, I think he'll get a shot for sure. He's definitely got some arm talent. He's got good and, size for and a quarterback. He's gotten better, like a lot better. So they're going to get it out to Horton in space. Watch out. Making guys miss. This guy, he is fun to watch. Kalon Horton, he graduated from Tarleton State, got cleared to play week two, and has made a, a huge impact on this team. They can use him in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I just, the, the, the ball, getting the ball to him in space is, is a treat for everybody in the, in the stands. Because he, he is, he can make a guy miss with one cut. Real quicker twitchy than a, this quicker than a hiccup. Yeah. <laughs> like you throw all those adjectives out there about him, and like he's so good. Well, I don't think that they're going to necessarily try to score here, but they can just run the clock. Well, that's not going to stop. Ragsdale gets the touchdown. Mean Green pouring it on late. What a day for the Mean Green coming off that heartbreaking loss in San Antonio. Sometimes it on the road, you, right? Galvanize your crew. Yeah. Like, that's fantastic job. And Gabe Blair, Manasse Mose, Fabici Wiwu, Jet Duncan, Casey Mareka. I mean, uh, you got to give those guys a lot of credit. Along with Jake Roberts, you know, you got to throw him in that yeah. O line room as well. And touchdowns on their last three drives. Wow. 40 to 13, this is a stunner. We're coming right back. What a bounce back win for North Texas. Coach Latrell giving love to his guys. This is what happened. Deep in the fourth quarter. Harris throwing it up. And UTSA wins 31-27. What a finish. Total heartbreak for North Texas, but how about you come all the way up here to Bowling Green, and you're gonna win 40 to 13? I mean, that. That's a great life lesson for these guys. Right, and I, I think they took that, what they were able to do. They were dominant at times in that game on both sides of the ball. What they they took that those lessons from that game, uh, being physical, being uh, in tune with each other defensively. We saw a lot of great things on the defensive side for this North Texas team. Well, look, if it if somehow it ends up being North Texas and UTSA in the conference championship game, I mean, based on the game last week, uh, you'll have a lot of interested people. 100%. Yeah. All right, so they only need 16 yards for a combined total of over 1,000 yards. In the first quarter, I said, how do you feel about 1,000 yards? I didn't think we'd have this imbalance. Yeah. First and 10 for the helicopter, that is zone 20. I mean, look. The Hilltoppers have 448 yards of offense, but only 13 points. That's, you don't see that very often. That's. Two minutes and two seconds to go in this one. And Austin Reed's just going to hand it off. So you look at the schedule for North Texas. They've got FIU, who's playing better and surging after winning today. You've got UAB. That's the game. They got, but they got to go yeah, to Birmingham. Right. That's the game. And then Rice, and Rice is playing better. So they've, they've got three tough games yeah. left. But they control their own destiny. But they control their own destiny, and 
Charlotte, Rice, and Florida Atlantic, as well as a trip to Auburn, is what Western Kentucky has left. Look, they need another win to become bowl eligible. I think they'll get another win, but you know, coming in here, you think they've got a, ch a, a really good chance to end up in the conference championship game, and now it's hard to see a path to get there. Right. All right, you have voted, people. You have spoken. Our player of the game, Austin Ani. And what a performance. 19 of 28, 317 yards, and two touchdowns. Deserving. And, you know, 100%. the guy who came in to play quarterback a little bit in the second half, Stone Earl, just added to their effectiveness offensively. Right, they did such, such a nice job. Uh, 196 rushing yards. So, again, got to give props to that offensive line. This team was dialed in, and Austin Ani was the facilitator of all facilitators today. He took the, the small plays, the short plays, didn't get greedy, made the right decisions. I'll tell you what, this defense has been playing, they played inspired football all afternoon. Just when you thought the Hilltoppers were gonna get on a run, they, they shut it down well, somehow. You, you can make a case that that missed field goal was so big, right, they had the ball they drove it 80 yards, 19 plays. They get no points, and they were never the same after that. Set, give me your uh, takeaway from today. Uh, mean Green, tough. Tough as nails, solid on defense. And when they're able to be efficient with the passing game, they're, they're going to be tough to beat. And they're going to have a real fun trip heading home. Everybody's got to feel good. You score 40 points, you limit Western Kentucky to just 13 points. And Coach Luttrell, all smiles.